Hello, good morning, good afternoon, or indeed good evening, depending on when you are watching. I'm James Innes, the Jobs Guru, and today I'll be talking about work-life balance. So, there's an old joke that when it comes to addressing your work-life balance, you first need to review your list of priorities. Family, job, exercise, holidays, medical, eating, hygiene, sleep, romance. But the catch is that you only have time for three things. Work and holidays are two, and you get to pick a third. There's no doubt that the 20, yeah, I know it's not a good joke, is it, but still. There's no doubt that the 21st century is one that is seeing significant increasing levels of consumer demand, with the need for services to be provided all day, every day. Understandably, this increase in demand is putting enormous pressure on the service providers, you know, themselves, leading to individuals working longer and more antisocial hours. As a result, many people have found themselves spending more time at the office and much less time at home. Now, traditionally, it's been working mothers who are most associated with the need to achieve a work-life balance to enable them to spend quality time with their children, whilst also allowing them to continue to, to bring in a wage. However, in these modern times, where equal rights are at the forefront of employment legislation, it is no longer just mothers who are entitled to a more flexible working day. Fathers are now being given the right to take paid paternity leave, and many people are offered flexible hours to enable them to continue acting as carers for other members of their family. In 2008, the UK government passed the Employment Act, stating that any employee with children under the age of six should have the right to request flexible working hours and that all employers should be obliged to give such requests serious consideration. Also, people with no dependents need to achieve an appropriate work-life balance to enable them to continue their training, to travel, or simply to enjoy more, more time pursuing leisure activities. You know, these are basic rights. There are undeniable advantages to employers who offer flexible working hours to their staff. They can enable them to provide a around-the-clock service to their customers and can also increase productivity as a result of the improved levels of, of motivation within the workforce. Absenteeism can be reduced, employment retention levels improved. Also, an employer that seems to promote flexible working can be a popular choice for prospective job seekers. Even if your employer does not currently support flexible working practices, it is possible to make certain changes that will enable you to improve your quality of life. Limit the number of days you stay late at the office. Allow yourself time off to attend family activities whenever possible and take regular breaks to ensure you don't work for long periods at a time. It's not healthy. In a nutshell, a healthy work-life balance is essential to help you to cope with the inevitable stresses and strains of your working life. So what's your work-life balance like? I, Ask yourself a few questions. Do you have too little free time for your friends and family? Do you feel like it's like you have to sacrifice yourself every day for the sake of your work? Are there many things you would like to do but don't have the energy for? Do you have constant regrets about what you're unable to find the time to do? Do you feel too much of your life is wasted doing things you have to do, not things you want to do? Do you lie in bed thinking about work, sleep badly, and often dream you're at work? I do. Do you find it hard to relax and just do nothing, even when you're on holiday? Do you feel like you don't have enough time to exercise, eat properly, or just keep yourself healthy? Can you remember the last time you just wasted an entire day doing nothing but relaxing? Do you feel burnt out, exhausted, unable to give your rule to any area of your life? Well, if the answer is yes to, to too many of these, then your work-life balance definitely needs some work. Now, of course, what with the current crisis, more of us are actually now working from home rather than in actual office, more than ever before. But that presents its own challenges when it comes to work-life balance, doesn't it? Do you know what I'm talking about? Do leave a, a comment describing your own experience. And maybe working from home has left you feeling burnt out, or maybe it's even energised you. Let me know. Now, when working from home, I think it's really important to try to have a dedicated space to work from, ideally a space to, where you can close the door and, you know, at the end of your workday, try to compartmentalise, try to keep your, your work life and your private lives as separate as possible, even though they may all take place under the same roof. I'm gesturing to my roof because, yes, I'm working from home too. Also, try to get a healthy routine going, one that involves taking regular breaks, just like you might do in the office. I'd, I'd strongly suggest you fit in at least 30 minutes of daily exercise, even if it's just a, a brief stroll around the block. These are, of course, unprecedented times, and you may suddenly find that the healthy routine you had meticulously, meticulously planned out goes right out of the window when you're suddenly required to homeschool the kids, for example. So it's important to build flexibility into that routine, 
and not to be too hard on yourself if on some days you, you just can't get everything done. Trust me, I can empathise with that. Now, before I wrap up for today, I wanted to mention a couple of important, um, well, important-ish things. Firstly, my apologies for looking increasingly like a Neanderthal. Yes, November. But there's also this hair getting longer and longer, but there's a good reason, okay? I'm currently growing it all the way out to 14 inches. Uh, I'm not even halfway, but so I can then cut it all off so that the little princess truss can make a wig out of it for a little girl with cancer. It's gonna take a while, uh, at least until early 2022. So it's just going to get worse. But I am open to suggestions, polite ones please, for what to do with it next year. Man bun, ponytail, like I say, polite suggestions only, please. Do let me have your thoughts in the comments section below. Oh, and if you'd like to make a donation to Little Princess Trust, then here, let's put it here, shall we, is the link to my Just Giving page. Now, and let's keep that on the screen to the end of the episode, shall we? And the other thing I wanted to mention is, well, I've been talking about work-life balance today, and quite simply, I've decided to practice what I preach. I've been putting out between one and four new videos, normally three, each and every week since May. And I'm now going to take December off before returning with a vengeance in January. I shall see you then. Thank you for watching today. Keep safe and be well, my friends. Goodbye. Oh, and Merry Christmas. Hope you like the jumper. Colin Firth, eat your heart out.